What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Monday, and welcome to Rent TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and today we're going to be continuing our Best Everyday Watch series. Uh, and today's price point is $7,500. So let's find a watch. Okay, but before we jump into today's topic, a uh, quick wristwatch check. Uh, I am wearing a Vecheron Constantine, a three-hand non-luminous dress watch in yellow gold. This watch is... F I meant, you know, I was going to say frickin', and then I just... Awesome. Um, it, it's, it's really beautiful. I think it's a 34 millimeter piece. It wears much larger because of the straight lugs. Uh, I just got it in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I mean, running like a dream. This watch is phenomenal. And this will be available along with, I think, six other vintage watches uh, from a Rolex uh, 1802 and, and, and an Admar Piguet reference 4100 that you're going to have to see a photo of right here. That is just freaking unbelievable. I mean, look at the condition on this thing. Uh, so these will all be available tomorrow and uh, we can't wait to share them with you. I want to talk about one more thing uh, before we jump into today's episode. And it's actually about our webmaster, Aaron. Uh, Aaron has worked at Theo and Harris since day one. Uh, it's uh, 28 months or so now. Uh, Aaron does live uh, in Texas. He lives in Dickinson, Texas. Uh, he lost his home, all of his belongings. And, you know, obviously it's been an absolute disaster uh, in his life for over a week now. Uh, Aaron's uncle did start... Uh, a GoFundMe page against what Aaron's requests were. Uh, I think he's too humble of a guy. Uh, but Aaron's uncle did start a GoFundMe page for Aaron and his family, his wife and two kids, uh, Nika and Talon. So if you guys uh, are interested in, in, in supporting a family and uh, helping people, you know, pay for hotels and, and, and you know, restarting, uh, I really would appreciate it if you even just checked out the GoFundMe link. Uh, whether you could donate, you know, five dollars, three dollars, uh, or more, it would be. If, if 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 not even just a, a big monetary help, uh, it would just it would I think it would just offer a lot of um, company, you know, in in a time of, you know, pretty much so despair. Uh, that's it, Aaron. We love you, the whole Watch Fam. Uh, even if they don't know it, they love you too. Uh, and that's it. So uh, thanks, guys, for taking the time to listen. And please do check out the GoFundMe page. The link is below. It would mean the absolute world. Okay, so let's first talk about what it it means to be an everyday watch. Um, I think that an everyday watch uh, services both parts of the uh, formal or informal world. It rides the middle. Uh, it, it can be worn uh, with a suit and tie just as easily as with, you know, uh, jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, that, that's what I think an everyday watch is. You know, weekend to work. So uh, so today, we're since we're going into the, you know, $7,500 range, uh, we're starting to really pick up the pace here and talk about a considerable amount of money. And I think that the importance of an everyday watch or, or a watch with versatility is highlighted at these high price points. You know, when you spend a thousand bucks. Uh, yeah, do you want to be able to enjoy and love your watch? Of course. Uh, but when you're spending a thousand bucks, it's okay if it's a little isolating. You know, um, it's, a, it's a significantly lower amount of money, so it can be a little bit more of a, a, a you know, a fun occasion purchase. Uh, but at seven thousand dollars, you know, this thing, at least in my opinion, better be able to be worn regularly. Uh, maybe that's just because I don't have a fortune, uh, but I think that I can speak for many people in the watch fam uh, when I do say that $7,500 is too much money to just spend uh, typically on something that you can only wear once a week, uh, even if you want to, or once every couple of months. So uh, so let's go through my thought process here. I'm thinking about great watches um, between that you know $5,000 and $7,500 mark. We already did the best everyday watches under $5,000, and I believe our, our conclusion Conclusion was what it was. It was Seiko. There was a wonderful Seiko uh, and a Nomos. So go check out that video uh, if you have not seen it already. Um, but now we're upping the ante. You know, we're going to the next level now. Um, and I, I think of Omega, although they are expensive and they're getting much more expensive. I think like every year, um, there's still value. You know, you can get a watch from Omega at three grand, thirty five hundred bucks, uh, whereas with Rolex, you don't really enter until like seven, I think. So Omega is a luxury brand that produces incredible watches uh, that still has value. So I was looking through the Omega lines here uh, in the, in the modern watches. And of course, everyone you know loves a Speedmaster. And even though I've been, uh, even though I've expressed my public skepticism about the Speedmaster hype, uh, I actually have come around to it a lot more in the past you know couple of 
maybe a couple of weeks, three, four weeks. Uh, but still, I recognize that it's it's a watch that most people can truly, truly enjoy. And with the coaxial movement, which is updated from the 861 caliber, I think you've got a real heavy hitting, like technolog technologically advanced watch. The, the coaxial movement was, although, I mean, it was developed by Omega, but the, the main, you know, the coaxial technology was purchased from George Daniels, one of probably the best watchmakers of all time. Uh, and that's not just me saying that. I don't think that I have the right to say that. But I mean, like Philippe Defour, I mean, Roger Smith, I mean, all of these people uh, that are probably the most well-respected in the watch world, you know, give praise up to George Daniels. So not only are you getting one of the most widely liked watches, but you're getting it with a souped up engine. On the second hand or gray market, you could pick these watches up around $58,000, $6,000, that kind of range. So you're still even falling below the $7,500 range. So I, I do think it's a wonderful option. Um, and I do think the Speedmaster is versatile. But for me, it's just not quite versatile enough to get the designation best everyday watch, uh, unfortunately. I don't think the Speedmaster goes so well uh, you know, with, with a suit. Of course it can be worn, yes. Uh, and it will it look bad? No, it'll look great. But not as great as other watches, I think. Now, that brings me to a watch on the other side of the spectrum, uh, the Glass Hoot Original line, particularly the Senator 60s. Uh, these watches, again, can be had in that 5,000 and change range. Or if you go with the Panomatic Lunar, so the Panomatic Reserves, those watches can be had in the seven to $8,000 range. So you're definitely pushing the top level. But, but taking a look at these watches, and, and particularly diving into the Senator 60s, uh, I, I love them. You know, the movements are, are a little small for the watches, but I think the decorations are absolutely incredible. The gold rotors are decadent and beautiful. Uh, the dials have this pie pan effect. I think that these watches are some of the best watches, um, dollar for dollar, on the market. But, you know, like the Omega, but on the opposite side, I think they're a little bit too formal to be considered an everyday watch. I don't think that these watches would look that at home or comfortable, you know, with a gray, you know, t shirt and jeans and a pair of Adidas. You know, can it be worn? Of course but it doesn't make the cut for me. So now I've gone on both sides, uh, and that brings me to my two uh, finalists for Best Everyday Watch. One from Jeje Le Coult, uh, which is the Geophysic. Probably one of my favorite watches of all time, and then the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, uh, a watch that I really, really do enjoy. Uh, but let's go to the Geophysic first. There are two modern variations, and I'll brush over them both. One is the 1958 model, which is a tribute to the original Geophysic, and it's extremely, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a reissue. I mean, I would say it's extremely respectful to the original, uh, uh, because it does look a lot like the original. Uh, from the dial design to the placement of the loom plots, which is not on the dial, but rather on the glass, um, to the, the, the closed case back and everything. I mean, this is a truly, truly uh, good watch and a beautiful watch. This watch has true, true heritage. It was to celebrate two events. Uh, one was a birthday of Visual Cult. I believe it was 100 or 125, I, I don't remember exactly. And then the other event it was celebrating uh, was a natural, national or international geophysical year, um, which, which was a, a whole year in which something like 70 countries all got together and agreed that if they promoted this idea of this natural geophysical year, uh, they would together promote uh, the study and the funding and the enthusiasm about geophysics. So JLC created this watch uh, in kind of you know support of that which is an awesome heritage. I mean, what, a, what an interesting heritage. The watch is amagnetic, and now in the, in the modern version, it features a ceramic swing system. So you're getting maximum, I don't wanna say durability or wearability, but uh, maximum longevity uh, and movement health, which is a really, really important thing. The more complicated watches get, the more expensive they're gonna to be to service down the road. And I think that technology like that, that, that reduces friction and reduces potential of breakdown, you know, is tremendously valuable, probably more so valuable than most other uh, technological advancements. You know, it really serves you. Uh, so so this watch, needless to say, I think is, is phenomenal. They released another example of the Geophysic uh, real quick, which is the True Beat. Uh, it's a mechanical watch, but it features a quartz-like ticking, uh, which does trick a lot of people. Uh, it's a cool little, you know, useless uh, piece of watch technology, but I think that for watch enthusiasts, it's one of the coolest things, you know, you can own because it's deceptive, you know. If you get it, that means you're in the club, you know. Everyone can look at a tourbillon and say, oh, that's expensive, you know. Um, but if you really understand where the true beat is and, and know that it exists, um, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's kind of like a members only, you know, kind of thing. So wonderful watch, and I genuinely do think uh, that you could pair this with a crocodile strap or a brown suede strap and, or a tan suede and wear it 
to work, you know, on Wall Street or wherever the hell you work, and then on the weekend to your son's soccer game, you know, like I said, in a t-shirt and jeans. So phenomenal. Uh, the other watch, the Rolex Watch Perpetual, real quick, uh, not only is it its price point, which you can get pre-owned around $5,500 to $6,000, is phenomenal, uh, but the color variations are beautiful. It's without a date, so there's none of that obstruction. Um, it really does remind me of, you know, vintage uh, Rolexes, uh, the 34 millimeter Precisions, the Air Kings, things like that. And although it's not an Air King or Precision, it's made to the same level of, you know, same standards. Uh, and they come in larger sizes now. So it's 34, 36, 39, I believe. Uh, and to me, it, you know, 39 is probably the perfect modern size. I love 36, but a 39 is a wonderful modern size. Uh, so, it, it, so it packs all of that Rolex punch on a bracelet with beautiful dial configurations uh, and with beautiful dial color configurations. And, it, you know, the world of Rolex, I think that there's so much hype and there's so much, you know, uh, pressure to overspend that at 5500 bucks or $6,000, it's almost amazing that this much value exists. So those are my two watches. They are both, um, so those are my two watches, the Geophysique, either variation, uh, and the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, they're both wonderful watches. They're reliable, they're built by heritage brands, they both fall under $7,500, and they are both extremely capable of being dressed up and being dressed down. I love versatility. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Rent TNH. If you liked the episode, please do physically like it down below and comment with your opinion. Uh, was I totally off? Did I hit the nail on the head? Let me know. Uh, and please, again, do check out the link below in our description uh, to help out Aaron. Like I said, whether that's two bucks or whatever you can afford, uh, it would genuinely uh, mean the world to me, of course, and especially uh, to a very hardworking guy that I think deserves a break. So that's it. Thank you so much again. Uh, happy Monday. Okay, so now... <coughs> oof, God, what is wrong with you? It was like... That was f***ing nuts. <coughs> I was in a sad, like, really solemn, like, Jimmy Kimmel moment there. <coughs> like, how do you sound selfish?